Hi and welcome, I'm Tommy Holst and this is the Dropcast Movie Poster Podcast. This format is part of the Instagram blog Drop and you can find us under at DropMacOfficial. We do reviews, news and interviews that all have to do with the film business and today we have a release episode of our Movie Poster Podcast. Actually, we wanted to focus on a release by Anthony Petrie, the Frankenstein release he did with uh, Vice Press and Bottleneck. But sadly, I have to report that he couldn't make it and we couldn't record this. Uh, He's also very sad and uh, he said that we're going to do it later on when the situation is a little bit better. And uh, the situation is the social injustice that that is going on in America. And... um, This situation led to the protests uh, for uh, justice for George Floyd and all the other victims and in this Black Lives Matter movement that came up again after a couple years now and is um, more violent or more, more, no violence, maybe not the right word, more um, outspoken or dramatic in in, in terms of um, what people are doing. The worldwide demonstrations are... um, are on the way there was one in berlin uh, or a couple a couple actually in berlin over the weekend over last weekend and there will be more in the future and the protests in the us they don't stop right now buildings are burning there's looting happen, happening but there's a difference between uh, what the protesters want what looters do and uh, what actually um the the maybe left leftist groups want and what what the goal of their purpose is and um so don't judge on every protester and don't think they just do that because they want to loot because it's not they want social justice and equality for um certain people in america in in in, in the us especially and also over here i mean there's a lot of police brutality and injustice happening in Germany, in Europe. So please be aware of that and um, try to educate yourself and look into the matter. It's not a, it's not about uh, the thing that is happening right now. It is more about the idea or how all of this happened um, from starting from slavery uh, or what, this is the time when the oppression st- started and um, up to here and now where the... Um, systematic racism is happening and uh, this is a sad sad reality and i try to educate my students i try to educate you people out there um if you don't have a clue about the situation um i'm gladly happy uh, if if you want to know more or if i could give you some um maybe some some ideas of what to do and uh where to look up stuff but it's all up to you you need to do the work it's not that African American people or Black people in general can do anything about this and help you um, and, and force this on you. It's about you. You need to do the work as a white person. And um, the thing is that the, the 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 protests happening, the police sirens and the helicopters down in downtown LA. So that's why Anthony couldn't be here with us and he says that um, we're going to do this in the future of course when the situation is better Um, i hope the situation gets better and i hope something happens and um, president trump is not the president a country needs i have friends they move back from the united states even actual um, u.s born citizens move away from the u.s because of the political situation and um, this is just incredible um, and unbelievable what happens right now so please stay safe out there and uh, to give you a little bit of a distraction if you want that distraction is the movie poster podcast and we're going to look at some very cool art i promise you and um You should head over to our Instagram profile um, if you listen to it and check out the art that we're talking about and check out also the art that is uh, spread by all the great artists that we talked to already and that have um, a certain uh, like a certain amount of reach. They get reposted. So check that out. They do great art for this movement and something needs to change. And uh, please check also out our YouTube version. And I tried to do make uh, I tried tried to do a special maybe uh, this week as well to focus on the art that came off uh, from this um, movement, 
and uh, we will uh, dig deeper into that and maybe give somebody else a perspective on what to um, look at, what to follow, what to um, do maybe even. And um, let's start with the art, I would say, and look at our first or first of all, like at the at the whole poster of all the artists that we look at here, which is um, a very cool art, like a very cool collage of different artists and more than I usually do. But um, I think since we don't have a release, that should be fine for everybody. The first artist I want to start out with is the great Matt Ferguson. Matt Ferguson did this Batman Begins piece um, with his company Vice Press and uh, Bottleneck together. And uh, they released this uh, for the international market, I think it was, for uh, via uh, Vice Press and the US market via Bottleneck Gallery. But you could like basically buy all the, the posters on, um, on both sides sites and there was also already uh, there was already a poster in it for the 89 batman with michael keaton where uh he also focused on the car you could see the car uh basically in front of it with batman um standing in front of it and you had the in the background you could see the uh, the is it acme plant I, i'm not sure but the, this 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 the, the chemical plant blowing up but um he continues this kind of style with like uh, with this like tilted um look of his posters he did also for a lot of the rings like that he uh, he did it for the mandalorian he did it for um his a new hope star wars uh, uh, um, poster where uh, leia and luke swing over and stuff like that very cool ideas and um as always great great work you can see uh, all the bats that form the sign you can see the wayne uh, logo here um the, the this kind of architecture of the city very cool stuff um and yeah this uh, as i said it was a release as a variant which is a little bit more bronze in it but very cool stuff by Matt ferguson who lately knocked it out of the park there's going to be in the next episode there's going to be uh, some more features of his art in there definitely a, um, you all saw the Empire Strikes Back poster. This is going to be for sale at some point. So uh, check into that as well if you really liked it. Um, our next one is by Nicholas Mowgli Mergli, uh, who did The Dark Knight. And this is a really cool poster as well. We also have the architecture going on um, of Gotham. And we have the Joker basically just as a shadow in here. Uh, very cool stuff. And uh, the motorcycle. And... Um, this is a different type of equipment uh, or equipment that is used by Batman. I wonder uh, what is going to happen in the third one in The Dark Knight Rises. What they're going to do with that. I hope so. Some Something is happening. Also in the same kind of style that focuses on the, the equipment Batman uses. And um, this turned out very well. I like the architecture piece. I got, I got the whole wall over there as an architecture piece uh, where I uh, would try to pick posters that have the certain buildings in it and uh this kind of style and i think that this uh, would also go very well together with the uh, matt ferguson piece speaking of um architecture there's this great piece by pablo Oliveira, who's a very 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 cool artist i really enjoy his works i already have the neo tokyo i'm looking forward getting maybe an ap of the um, LA-29 piece for Blade Runner he did. Same kind of style as the cityscape, very cool. And Pablo's a very nice guy. I, I talked to him a couple times. I tried, still try to get him on the show. So Pablo, please, please join us in the future. Uh, we love your stuff. And yes, your English is fine, I bet. We could we could do a try if you wanted to, but uh, people maybe have yeah, write, write Pablo to get him on. <laughs> so we can maybe for, like, soft push here <laughs> so he's gonna try and uh do this for us um yeah but his piece is very great there's um the bottom two are the ho the, the the holo foil or like a foil variant which is really cool it's kind of like the style we, we see in the back here with the dolly and the mysterio um, um fishbowl hat 
and then the top two are the monochromatic versions just screen printed i picked the first one the the gray one here i really liked it and metropolis one of my favorite movies uh, very very good i have already called fitzgerald metropolis up which is very great and pablo knocked it knocked this out of the park i can't wait what he's going to come up next with with which kind of sky sky uh, line or which kind of cityscape he's going to do and um yeah he's he's doing very very cool stuff so pablo keep on doing it and come on soon on our podcast Okay, uh, the next one I want to talk about is the one in the beginning by Anthony Petrie, the Frankenstein he did. And he focused, of course, on Frankenstein's monster. And we have the, the, this iconic part of the movie uh, put in there. And he already sent me in advance before he had, this, uh, like, had to cancel it. Um, basically last minute, he already sent me some pictures on what he was work or how he was working on this kind of piece. And this was already very cool stuff so i don't want to take away anything um, that we're going to do it in the future and um, very cool piece also released by bottleneck and vice press um i'm really looking forward for this there was a variant for that which is glow in the dark people and in, in the groups on facebook they were all like showing it off it's really cool and um yeah this this uh this is a really cool piece i can't wait to talk with anthony about it our next one is the Watchman piece by Jason Reich. I hope I said his name correct. He did this very cool piece at the same time with the Pablo Oliveira Metropolis release. And this focuses perfectly on uh, the most iconic character, um, uh, Mr. Manhattan, because of the this blueness, <laughs> I'd say. And uh, Watchman, great, great, great movie, great comic book. I really enjoyed it. And the way what he could do and um, the the time plays a role the doomsday clock everything is in there great great stuff um there was a uh, like a foil print as well for this one and also looks really cool uh, probably in person and the colors pop on, on this, this regular version is the metallic ink also very nice um as i said i can't wait uh, for people having it in hand and uh, showing how great this one looks sadly i didn't pick one up but maybe the aftermarket is going to be good to me our next one is going to be also a bottleneck release by you fleming who did this great indiana jones and the raiders of the lost ark piece you have everything in it from the movie i like i also like the this kind of frame style that it has and that it goes out of basically out of the the the, the main part of this one and uh I think you could perfectly fit the credits here or something like that and would make a great movie poster, in my opinion. And you have like the map in the background here with Egypt and you see Iran over here and um, very, very cool stuff. All the different scenes, the characters that play an important role, the Nazi bomber where he fights on. And uh, uh, yeah, there it is. Also the scene very very cool iconic stuff and i love indiana jones and i just re-watched it the other day all the three parts great great movies and i can't wait for number five because we're not going to talk about number four same day release was this great piece by tom uh welker i think it was or tom walker i'm sorry i need to check into that um i think it was Tom Welker, but not sure. Let me, let me, Tom Walker. See, let's, let's make sure on that. So Tom Walker did this cool Mandalorian poster and uh, there's a couple of variants in different colorways. Very cool. And this focuses mainly on the third episode of the Mandalorian, even though it's on the whole series, because we have, this is the way, because this, the third ep episode was uh, coined this term. And we have also the, the uh, Mandalorians that helped him to escape with baby Yoda after he did what he did and uh the sin i think it was the sin right chapter three was the sin and it was a great episode i really enjoyed it one of my i think is my top one or two I'm not sure yet um um because like after every rewatching, i see new stuff and it's like always something cool to um to find out about this tv show even with the new series the, the gallery was it disney galleries where they focus on the mandalorian there's a lot of cool stuff behind the scenes stuff and I can't wait for the next season. And the one after that, because they already announced it. <laughs> so, um, yeah, Tom Walker did a good job on this one. I like the colors. I like this this kind of sunset-y theme that everybody with the binary sunset here that most of the artists focus on uh, when they do the work. Um, cool stuff. Really enjoyed it. 
This one here is a new print by a, a new artist for the, oh, my bad. My bad, this is not one, this is this way I want it, <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, this new print, it is, um, it is very, very cool stuff because it's something new. It's a New England artist um, who did the first collaboration with Bottleneck and his name is um, Calvin Lituri. Uh, I hope I pronounced that right. And he did uh, this piece. It call, it's called It Corrupts the Soul. And uh, there were different editions. There was a morning edition, an evening edition, a night edition, and twilight edition. In my opinion, um, this morning edition is my favorite piece of it because I like the contrast of the the blueish kind of color, blue blackish color, and this kind of bronze brownish. Very cool contrast. I really enjoyed this one, and um, it looks really great. Probably in person. It got the frame around it. Um, very cool stuff. Um, and uh, this this artist um, did something different for the movie Midsummer, as you, some of you might guess already, because you can see the hut and you can see the bear and uh, all like the dancing around the, the this um i don't know what it's called in sweden but this thing <laughs> the the midsummer tree i don't know but yeah they dance around that and uh, you can see all those different parts from the movie and it's a different feel to it than a regular movie poster or iconic pop culture but it's more in an artsy way and i really like it and uh, um calvin Laituri did a very Laituri did a very good job and uh, I really enjoyed this piece and uh, check out the different variants. You can still find them on, um, on Bottleneck to look at as well. Um, turned out really, really cool. The next pieces also released by Bottleneck are the Ben Harmon Disney, um, Disney, I think it was for the anniversary as, anniversary as well. Um, he did, uh, did this incorporation or they did this, uh, Bottleneck did this incorporation with Island. And um, the first one, as you can see, Cinderella with the magic castle. You can see the magic going around. You have the, 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 the carriage here. And um, this, the, I could imagine this would look really, really cool in person. And especially in a, in a kid's bedroom as the other ones by, um, by, by um, Mr. Kalsudas. I think it was George Kalsudas who did this. And... Um, uh, this would go along very well. Also, very cool stuff is on the Sleeping Beauty part because we have two editions. We have a day edition and a night edition. We have the castle as well here and the landscape and the landscape changes obviously at night and we see the Maleficent part in here basically. And uh, this is really, really good. Uh, this two-sided way to look at the, the Sleeping Beauty part. It has the same kind of, same kind of uh, measurements as the Pablo Oliveira one, and um, I really enjoyed to look at this one. Also, especially the the the, the day version, very kid friendly and for a child's bedroom as well. The next piece is going to be by the one and only Mark Chilka. We had him a couple times in here. It's a Batman Beyond for a Batman series he did with a bottleneck as well. And uh, I like this piece because I really enjoy Batman Beyond. He's one of my favorite Batmans, and. Um, uh, he did this kind of piece uh, in a cool kind of way because it's it looks very futuristic and very still gothamy with like the this kind of smoke coming up here and then we have like the the city here and all the blinky lights and stuff like that so this is all very very cool very futuristic and still in a cool style and it's uh, you, and you could see the Mark Chilcott style he, he uses, and I really enjoy this stuff he does. And um, this Batman piece turned out really well. The other one's also very cool. And uh, I decided to put in another uh, Mark Chilcott piece. And this one is by is the Iron Giant, and it's by uh, released by Gray Matter Art, who did a good job on this recent is because this is a very cool, tranquil piece. We got the sunset going on in the background. We have the Iron Giant, which uh, Mondo made a couple years back, a very cool figure, um, a scale figure. And uh, this figure was really awesome. Sadly, I didn't get one, but uh, Iron Giant, one of my favorite characters and a great, great movie. So I really enjoyed this piece by, Mar uh, by Mark Chilcott. And um, yeah, check it out. Maybe there sometimes a Grey Matter Art has a couple and Grey Matter Art does also 
Um, not so many movie posters lately. It was more focused on comic or like comic book covers. Like Dolly had a release with Thor, which was really great. Then there is uh, the Axel Ross or is it Alex or Axel Ross, who does like he was like a super great illustrator. I really enjoy his art, and he did a, a Marvel cover which is really cool. So check over Grey Matter Art, all that stuff. Um, it, it's worth it, definitely, I tell you. And the next piece is by uh, Gallery 1988. They always do cool stuff, and this piece is by Dan Mumford, and he focused on the Frankenstein as well. And uh, this is this piece is called... Um, let, me, let me read it for you. It's called Now I Know What It Feels Like To Be God, which is... Um, which is a, a good title in my opinion, a little bit long, but uh, I, I like this kind of piece and it's an 18 by 24 inch print. There's only 50 available and still available at Gallery uh, Gallery 1988. So head over there to the gallery if you like this Dan Mumford style, his typical style. He did some cool um, Star Wars Episode 9 prints, like, the, like a digital print. Um, for the release, like every every week for the IMAX, they, they, they came out with that. They did that for Last Jedi and Force Awakens. And in Europe or Germany, at least, they had the release for the last one. So that was a, that was very cool to have. I have them in, in my flat file. Um, cool stuff out there. And Dan Mumford always doing a good job. I got a pet cemetery by him, which is really cool. Glow in the dark. So um, also very nice to have. Next one we are looking at is by Mondo, and this one is um, Buffy the Vampire Slayer, a prophecy girl, or prophecy girl, and this one is by Sarah Deck, and she did a really cool, good job to capture this cool, cool series. I really enjoy uh, that one, and this kind of like I like the contrast of it, like the the innocence by the dress, and then the badassery up top with the with the stake and uh, um, um, what's it called? The crossbow and the leather jacket, really cool. Slayer's Bond fits perfectly. I really enjoy this one. And I, I don't, I don't, I didn't think, uh, I don't think there are that many cool uh, Buffy prints out there. So um, head over to Mondo and check if it's still available or if you could get it off the, off the market. If you're a big Buffy fan, it's definitely worth it. Another Mondo release, uh, same kind of day, is Big Trouble in Little China by Rich, Ke uh, Rich Kelly, who did this very, very cool print. And Rich Kelly um, did a couple other very cool prints before in his life. And this one is one of my favorite, like, guilty pleasure kind of movies. Like, something that I uh, watched to come down like on, on like a Sunday afternoon. I mean, is that Carl Russell in it and uh, Kim Cattrall, obviously. And um, sadly, we don't see low pain somewhere, but uh, all his like the, the, the fighting is very cool. Oh, oh, there he is. Never mind. I'm sorry. He's in their back a little bit, but he's one of my favorite characters uh, because he has a certain look. And I think Mondo did a, a T-shirt with, 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 with him with Chinese lettering on top by Paige Reynolds, which is really, really cool as well. And uh, I think, let me, let me see if I can pull that up here. There it is, the, the Paige Reynolds one, which is really cool and uh, um, fun to look at. So, the, but, but back to the print, um, Big, Trouble in, uh, Big Trouble in Little China is a very cool movie. I really enjoyed this one. Rich Kelly did a cool poster on it. I, same goes here for like the framing. I love it when it goes above the frames here and has like a frame within the borders of the, the poster. I really enjoy this kind of stuff. And yeah, the, I'm just gonna go back to the Page Reynolds one. I, I really love this shirt, man. This shirt is probably uh, still available. I'm not sure. Let me check, maybe I can do a check right now. Can I? No, I cannot. It's on the, just on a blog page, but it's gonna be in there. Uh, it is already in there since uh, mid of May. It's like. Uh, around the 14th so check in maybe the shirt is still available because most of the time they have a lot of stuff and it's a uh, I have a Mondo shirt they do um, they have good like the good quality and the cotton they use and the print on the shirt is very well done and uh, this low pan just unbelievable huh? as you can see here huh yeah um, so uh, yeah Paige Reynolds on this one good job with the idea of it or doing this because this is a very 
iconic uh, look, I'd say. And our last one, also done by Mondo, is this uh, Mondo and uh, and uh, Na uh, Nautilus Gallery. That's they did it together. Nautilus is a, a, I think they're from Belgium or French or like a French gallery. Nautilus art prints. They do a very good job um, because they have uh, some cool Laurent Durieux um, prints still available on their website. And last time I checked, they had still the uh, the first blood. Uh, variant which is all in red uh, still available online uh, so check that out uh, it's m probably worth it now if you don't get this one for the other stuff definitely and this uh, piece the first blood piece the rambo piece is by uh, oliver bird which is a, a cool artist i really treasure and uh, i'm still trying to get uh, get him to talk to us maybe he will or have time in the future and uh, he was, I think he was on uh, while he was working on the Mondo Happy Hour for um, last week or the week before. I'm not sure. But yeah, that's always fun. And uh, yeah, I love this piece because it has like, I, I like this, like that he kept it so simple with the Stallone here on top and then the Rambo on the other side. Like it's a uh, uh, Stallone plays Rambo kind of kind of thing. And uh have one war against uh, one war against one man very cool the the the, the credit block kept very simple and it all looks kind of like camouflagey and i like the the eyes of stallone here like what he did there um very cool stuff and um this kind of brushwork what it actually kind of looks like um i wonder if he did like the digital uh brushes on that if he actually used this kind of um certain way to create it or uh, what he did but I really enjoy this one and um, I like the look of it it's also a great poster by Mondo um, so keep doing on uh, more cool stuff Oliver Bird I really enjoy your art so this is it this week um, as I said um, we sadly don't have um, Anthony Petrie on that we could uh, talk about more uh, talk more about his uh, Frankenstein piece but we will be back next week and then we will have an uh, interview with Dolly on. Dolly is a great artist and uh, we talked for over one and a half hours or so. So there was a lot to talk. He uh, is a very good person. So follow him on Twitter as well and follow all the great artists and the galleries, of course, um, that are mentioned here. And the poster posse who we did last week. They did a very, they, they always do good stuff. So check them out. I really enjoy working with them. And uh, the Flat File Friday we did, uh, no, 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 that's not a Flat File Friday. It was the Flat File Fight that we did. It's still uh, in my highlights under the uh, Poster Posse episode. And uh, it's still available on their website on IGTV. It's a very funny thing where we pulled out uh, where I pulled out a couple of my prints and Don Thompson uh, pulled out a couple of his prints so that was fun and um, you can also check them out because they do a lot of cool passion projects and they a lot of their artists they focus on this uh, social justice movement happening in the United States so please please stay safe in terms of COVID-19 and stay safe in terms of uh, social injustice please fight against social injustice and uh, do something, please do something, because it can't go on like that, that people are oppressed and uh, people are not really educated and they think they can do what they want, especially when it comes to white people and white privilege. Okay, guys, uh, we'll see each other next week. And uh, until then, leave some comments. Let me know what's going on. Let me know who you want to see on the show. And I try to make it happen. Bye, guys.